Hello everybody. I hope this finds you well. I'm making this as a response to uh, some comments I received from a fellow Christian uh, who is a pre-trib rapturist. And uh, he made some comments, responded to some comments I made on a video by the Bureau Beacon. Um, I would like to first say that uh, I do like the channel. The Bureau Beacon is a group that puts out many good informative videos that um, many ev evolutionists and uh, atheists do not like. I do not agree with everything that that channel puts out. I do not uh, see some of their arguments as being very scientific. But uh, they do put out a large variety of different Christian topics, and uh, I do find it uh, interesting to go over the things and look at them. But uh, this has nothing to do with the video in question, more of the comments we were talking about. Of course, the video was about how uh, Harold Camping's uh, prophecy at the end of the world thing back in May was all wrong and how it got a lot of people killed in Vietnam. Mountain yards at that. I have a great respect for the mountain yard people and had many friends which came from that region after the war as refugees here. They're good people. I hated to see that, hear about that. I'll get into it and I'll show you the comments and then we'll go over his arguments for the pre-trib rapture and I'll show you how unfortunately you're wrong. I'm sorry. The Christian hammer. So, we'll get started here. Okay, here's the video in question. Harold Camping's false prophecy caused hundreds to be slaughtered. You can go and check the video out yourself. It is a very interesting video. Talk about it. And again, right here in the very top of the page is our comments. It first started with my comment. And I'll let you read it all. We'll come down here to his comment, which he offers several Bible verses to back up his uh, pre-trib rapture belief. Okay, we'll go into it, and we'll take each one of these. This may take some time. Sorry if this video runs long. We'll start with Jeremiah 37. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 states Alas for that day is great so that none is like it it is even the time of Jacob's trouble that he shall be saved out of it interesting hmm. sounds kind of like he might have something there huh let's read further on that will we let's get it in context for it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord of hosts that I will break his yoke from off the, thy neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, who I am raised up unto them. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the lands of thy captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. And for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, through, though I make a full end of all nations, whether I have scattered thee yet, will I make, not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. Wow, well, yeah, that kind of sounds a little different there. That's how prophecy's been fulfilled. 
the, the house of Jacob is now out of all those countries and in bondage and is now in the land of Israel. And uh, they're surrounded by enemies on all sides and constantly attacked, yet they're not afraid. Uh, that prophecy's been fulfilled. That's not the rapture. And it was a great and terrible day like none have ever seen. And the day when places like Auschwitz were in use, would you not say? Or nothing like that had happened before. Sorry, that's not it. It's not rapture teaching. Let's go to the next verse, please. Now, the second verse he gives, Matthew 24, 15. Oh, I've heard this one several times. Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, that doesn't help your case any. Enduring unto the end. Enduring to the end. End of what? Enduring to the end. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, and then shall the end come. That's not a rapture thing. Nothing to do with the rapture. It talks about the end. Before it, let's go ahead of that in a little bit. So what we've got here is the prophecy of the end, wrote by, spoken by Christ himself, wrote down by supposedly Matthew. And uh, it's when the, they're asking when will all these things come to be, when will be the end of all these things. He says up here, all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall, the deliver, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all the nations for my name's sake. And then shall many of be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. God likes overcomers. He likes those who are able to endure hardship and get by, get through it. Those with strong enough faith not to let all of these terrible things further up in this chapter about wars earthquakes, pestilence, those that can overcome these things. That person that endures to the end is great. It's not rapture teaching. Not rapture teaching at all, of any kind. Okay. Next verse after that is 1 Corinthians 6.19. Corinthians 6.19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, and in our God. That has nothing to do with the rapture. It just tells you that Christ paid the price for your sins. That's not rapture. Nothing to do with the rapture either. And then it now goes Matthew 25, 31 through 46. Okay. Matthew 25. 31 to 36. Matthew 21, 25, 31 through 36. When the Son of Man 
shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them from one, one from another, as his sheep divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. And then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, bless of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepare for your foundation of the world. Now, um, that's after Christ returns and establishes his kingdom on earth. There's no rapture in that. No one's. That's. I believe every bit of that. It has nothing to do with being saved from tribulation. Okay. Revelations 14 11 through 12. Revelations 14 11 through 12. Okay, Revelations 14, 11 through 14. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of, the, of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord for from henceforth. Die in the Lord from henceforth. Ye saint, ye saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And I look and behold a white cloud and upon the cloud one set like a son of man having on his had a golden crown, and his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle, and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Reaping. Harvest. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Interesting. Than what I was saying all along. Okay. James 2.24. James 2.24. James 2.24. You see that how that by works of man is justified and not by faith alone. Likewise also was not Rehab and harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger and had sent him out another way For as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also What are you trying to tell me here? Do you know my works? And that takes us to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not yourself, it is the gift of God. Not for works, lest any man should boast. I agree completely. Only grace can save us. What's that got to do with the rapture? And the last, Titus 3, 5. Titus, chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which, have been, which we have done, but according to the mercy he saves us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Yes, he does. Every day. None of that has anything to do with being raptured. I do not know where you're getting 
a pre-trib rapture from any of those verses. It says last trump, not trumpet. Don't lie about the text. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble because Jacob Israel suffers, not the church. Rightly divide the word of truth. Divide the word of truth? Divide the word of truth. The word of truth can't be not, cannot be divided. What you lack is discernment, young man. It's not divide the word of truth, it's divine. Discernment. Someone has taken you and taken all these verses out of context and wrapped them all up in a nice neat package to sell you something which is not in the Bible. There is no pre-truth rapture. In fact, the tribulation is there to test you. To see what you're made of. Are you worthy of the kingdom of God? When troubles come upon you and you find yourself being tortured and persecuted for your beliefs and your faith in Christ. And you start thinking, why have I not been saved, O Lord? You'll start thinking he doesn't exist and it was all a lie. And then you'll turn on your Christian brothers and sisters and turn them in to be free of the torment. Because you thought God was going to save you from it. He's not going to save you from it. You have to go through it. We all got to go through hell to get to heaven. There is no easy way. Please, consider your position carefully before you make such comments to people such as myself. Again, I have little time to mess with you. I forgive you. And I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that you might learn to discern. And I know that's really hard these days with all the crap we have to put up with. Stay in the moment. The past is but memory. And the future is only imagination. And when we get to the future, we will find God still there, as He is now. As He was in our memories. And I hope this helps some of you. And you can, you have the right to disagree with me if you wish. But before you do, please, do more research. And don't just take some pastor's word for it. Because many pastors out there are servants Satan and they are deceiving you as they have deceived the church for, since the time Christ left it if it's not in the word it's not from God test all things And uh, peace, love, and understanding be with you all. Have a good day.